Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to this webinar of Global Fleet, the executive network for global fleet and logistics decision makers. It's the 21st of March, so spring is here, and this means that it's time for more nicer and interesting weather. But it's also time today to discuss how to increase efficiency in your routing and delivery software and operations. And this we do together with our partner here, Technology, and also with Sanborn and Abgio. We are really pleased that you are here today with us for an exciting webinar. Throughout the webinar, you will see that we will have several experts that will deliver expertise and best practice sharing around how to increase efficiencies in your route, routing and delivery software. Now you have the opportunity to ask your questions via the chat function in this webinar tool. And at the end of the webinar, we have time for a short Q&A together with our experts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now introduce the topic of today. In this webinar, you will learn how to increase efficiency in your, in your routing and delivery software and operations because this is crucial for your business efficiency. Whether you are currently using spreadsheets and cell phones or basic routing packages, there are several opportunities to gain efficiencies. Indeed, what we are seeing still today is that too many times we see that fleas lose time. We see also that they are not always communicating well internally with their drivers and stakeholders. We see expected and unexpected inefficiencies, and we see that they lose money. And here it is where Here Technology steps in. Here Technologies has some of the world's most detailed transportation data built specifically for routing and last mile delivery operations. And in this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, Experts will explain how you can use here routing planning functions and data to save time and money. And Abgio, ladies and gentlemen, is a division of the Sanborn Map Company, and they are specialists in helping companies improve their logistic solutions as well as creating custom applications for logistics. Abgeo solutions are tailored to your preferred workflows and can be integrated with your back office data and IT systems. So you are here in the ideal webinar to gain knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, we will have several experts throughout this webinar. And so it's my pleasure to introduce to you our experts. We have Dave Holmes. He is the customer engineer at Abgeo. Also, David Breeding, the Director of Analytics at Abgeo. And then from here, Technologies, we have Charlie Maynard, who is the Senior Manager, Industry Solutions, and Tony Perez, who is the Senior Sales Solutions Architect. And the moderator of this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, is Aaron Doucet. He is the Creative Director and Sales Engineer at Abgeo. Aaron, I... I'm glad to welcome you into this webinar, and I hope that you are doing well. Doing great, Stephen. Thank you for the warm introduction to our presentation today. Really appreciate uh, you having us. No problem. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Um, it looks already like a very interesting and also necessary topic to detail together with the audience. So without no further ado, I will give you the floor. You can share your presentation and make sure that we have the right expertise in place and that our audience, our participants can ask questions if they want via the chat function in the tool. Aaron, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks again, Stephen, for the warm welcome. And you're all here for learning about how to increase uh, routing efficiency for deliveries and logistics with here in AppGeo, as Steve mentioned. I'm going to go through our introduction and um, welcome here pretty quickly, just as you know, some of this um, we heard already. But you know, today we're going to be diving into what are the real uh, bread and butter behind understanding last mile delivery challenges. 
We're going to be looking at the tools that HERE offers to address those challenges. And lastly, we're going to talk about how AppGeo and Sanborn can address some of those challenges as a HERE partner in getting you started. And last but not least, we're here for a Q&A session with our panel of experts. So you've heard uh, these names before now, but just to welcome our uh, esteemed colleagues from HERE Technologies, we're joined today by Charlie Maynard, as well as Tony Perez. Um, you know, as you can see from their bios here, they have quite a lot of experience that is directly tied to logistics as well as routing solutions. So two real great subject matter experts here that have a lot of experience in this exact industry. Uh, going to my team now here at Sanborn and AppGeo, um, you're joined today by David Breeding, who is the Director of Analytics, and David Holmes, who is our Customer Engineer. And again, two really knowledgeable folks when it comes to the science as well as the practice of geospatial technology. I've gotten to work with these two uh, quite a bit over the past few years, and I can assure that you're in good hands for this presentation. And uh, my role here today is going to be in asking some of the questions that will guide us through um, and uncover some of the interesting topics that I'm sure many of you are uh, curious about. So I want to kick things off right away by diving into a question. We're going to start off uh, with one for David. And that's that, you know, we're seeing a significant increase in the adoption of modern digital tools and technologies that are improving operations among fleet managers, delivery drivers, and business owners. Now here at AppGeo, we've been at the forefront of developing different solutions in a lot of different spaces, but um, you know more and more in that delivery and routing space. So can you tell us a little bit about our journey in solving these types of problems and what was our inspiration? What were some of the challenges we came up with along the way and uh, what we've done in the space? And then yeah. give us a sense of uh, how that's been evolving over the past few years. For sure. No, happy to, Aaron, and, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. You know, our, our journey at AppGeo around routing and logistics began, you know, I think five or six years ago when, you know, we work with a lot of DOTs and, and we're conceiving of kind of um, snow plow removal and routing of, of multiple trucks and over large distances to get really an optimum solution. And, you know, we dove right in. We've got a team of data scientists here and, and really there's a ton of complexity um, involved there and quickly learned um, you know, what was required to get it done, all of the underlying data um, all, and, and all of the details associated with the logic for how this work was done became a really a big eye-opening experience to the, to the real challenge of doing this efficiency. And we actually um, <laughs> kind of abandoned that effort, but I think it was a really formative learning moment, which, which ultimately, you know, we, we kind of looked to third-party solutions to kind of support our, our routing uh, kind of work. And, and we had a opportunity to, to partner with here back in the beginning of 2020. Um, and at that same time, there was a big kind of thing going on in the world, really impacting um, everybody. But as a technologist with this massive toolbox, I was instantly kind of excited about what here brought to the table and, and what they could do as it relates to routing and logistics. Um, but really, you know, in that moment of, of kind of uh, around the pandemic and learning about these challenges like that, that challenge of bringing products to, to everyone's home, everyone needed it on their doorstep. Um, and that just created this challenge and for businesses, both small and large, right? Businesses that have been doing this for a long time, as well as the around the corner store that needed to figure out how to sell like this challenge of getting your product where it needs to go was pressed upon everyone. And, and that kind of, um, that ubiquitous desire for home, you know, delivery paired with fluctuation in supply, you know, really kind of just challenged many organizations that were thinking about this. We're talking with organizations that had never tried to conceive of this, but it came down to this, this opportunity, the organizations that, that are able to kind of deploy this technology to respond to these changing demands, whether it's, it's traffic or a last minute order, you know, they are really positioned to take advantage of, of this change and, and these, these, these kind of challenges, because they can find those efficiencies that others that maybe have been doing things in a certain way for a long time can't adapt as quickly. And so that's really the, the, the opportunity to gain market share. And, and but you really need to consider, you know, your business closely and, and think about how these technologies can feather in nicely together to help you make that impact. Absolutely. And we've definitely seen an acceleration in the adoption of this type of technology over that, you know, three year period. 
and have definitely been at the center of a lot of those conversations. I want to go a step deeper now and take a look at you know, the various factors that need to be considered when developing an effective routing solution. Um, and you know what we're looking at here, we have some navigation-based factors, we have business factors. Can you walk us through how we take these different factors into account when yeah. designing and implementing a solution? Yeah, you know, this is kind of, you know, when we think about optimal or ideal solutions, right, you know, it, it really is a business answer. The people that are responsible for kind of getting the job done are evaluating oftentimes in this planning capacity, you know, um, what that means. And so, it, you know, as we break down here, there's those two dimensions, right, all those navigational factors, which are really important, having that data on hand, having traffic conditions, understanding the roadways, you know, can you be there? Can you actually kind of bring your truck or bring your kind of um, vehicle along those those pathways. You know, you need all that data available to try and answer the question. You also need to understand those constraints as it relates to how you're going to actually get the job done. You know, what types of truck, you know, what types of um, you know, drivers do you have available, their schedules. Um, there's just a lot of different dimensions that need to be considered for you to arrive at that ideal solution. And so when we think about this, like this is where we start. We want to understand when we're working with customers, what they're working with, what they currently have, and, and then evaluate where there's opportunities to get closer. Because because there is no ideal solution. It, it's it's an approaching towards the best solution that's possible given the given what we have available. So this is how we like to think about it when we're getting into a problem initially. <clears throat> and and so you know this go oh, go ahead go ahead Aaron. Oh sorry I was muted there but I was gonna say there's nothing like a real life example to really set the stage for why all this is so important um, for the customer. And I was hoping you could share a little bit about our uh, experience working with food banks in this space and what, you know, the pivot that they had to make in response to all of these changes. Yeah, you know, this is a simple example to start with, um, but it was really kind of early, you know, in the pandemic, we were looking to make an impact. We were looking to leverage these logistic solutions to, to kind of, you know, it, you know, in our local communities, right? And what we've learned, you know, thinking about this this problem that these food banks were having is they had people that wanted to help, you know, get food to where it needed to go, but these volunteers now needed to kind of, there was a new mode. Everyone used to come to a food bank to get their food, but now they needed to deliver this. So volunteers would arrive at the food bank and they'd need to be given routes to go take it to those families in need, which could online kind of say, I'm in need of food. And, and really like, oh, well, this is great. We'll just, toss it into a routing solution and let that answer spit out and optimize across all these drivers, right? But the reality was, is their business context, that specific thing that they needed to keep into account when solving this problem was they wanted to leverage all of the people that wanted to help. They, the optimum for them was to use all the drivers and balance these deliveries across multiple vehicles and, and the abilities of those respective drivers to actually carry maybe larger items or heavier things like water, for example, versus maybe other items which are more manageable. So these specific details as it relates to the volunteer were really important to consider when generating the route. So it actually was like less than optimal, but for the customer, it was optimal to them. And, and they made a huge impact. And this solution has actually leveraged all over the country um, and has been making an impact for, for a number of years now. Absolutely. And one thing that comes to mind with this uh, customer or experience as well is the simplicity was so crucial. You had volunteers from you know all walks of life really coming together for a really good cause, but not many had a very strong technological background, let's say. So having a solution that they could get on and, um, you know, quickly get up and working with minimal training uh, was really, really amazing to see. Um, let's take it one step further now and talk about, you know, the interoperability and uh, flexibility of these platforms, because you know, it doesn't matter how uh, incredible your routing is if you can't get your data into it, right? So tell us a little about what it takes to achieve that. That's that's a great part, Aaron, right? You, you need, you know, there are some really awesome routing solutions out there, but if you can't get that business information in and you can't get it to the person that needs it to execute on it, like you're not gonna gain optimal efficiency. So when we think about this problem, what are these other systems we're talking with? And so. As another example, we you know, were working with a small grocery store chain, nine stores, high-end products. There were perishability concerns. They wanted tighter time windows rather than, you know, people wanted to know when their, their grocery is going to be on the front, you know, front porch to bring it inside. They just spent 
a good amount of money to have it delivered. And so, okay, what are these systems in play? They were actually well positioned from a pandemic perspective that they had an, a developed e-commerce solution, but that solution was really just allowing them, they had this one delivery integration using a, a third party delivery service that basically you were buying rides for, for groceries and it was very inefficient. They took a percentage of the sale. They paid these drivers pretty high fees to take them short dif dis distances because their customers were local to the chain. They normally went to the store, but now they want that. So they wanted to support that store and, and still kind of work with them. So what we what we kind of had to work out for them is like, what were these uh, API opportunities? What In what ways could the e-commerce system <clears throat> give, the, give the orders to this another routing solution that could then put multiple deliveries in the truck that could address some of these constraints around, well, we can't have too many, you know, the, the, the whole drive time route couldn't be more than, a, you know, I think it was 30 to, to, to 30 minutes to an hour as they wanted to kind of have maximum in car time. Um, but they wanted to have time windows of a, a number of hours. So again, these are the examples of those constraints um, that they were kind of applying to this problem. And also they wanted to um, really support their best customers to give them the opportunity to deliver first in the morning for that small business that needed to have their, their, their raw goods. They needed that level of, of uh, optimization or obviously prioritization is the better term. So here as a great solution, which actually can accomplish all of these really um, need, not niche, but kind of specific business context to really deliver a routing solution that's gonna get it where it needs to go on time, but also accommodate those additional prioritization kind of demands. So it was a really interesting project and, and the ability to integrate other systems was crucial to making that happen. <clears throat> You're on mute again. <laughs> My apologies. So we've talked a bit for you know the concepts behind the routing, but what about actually turning that into an application, um, something that can be really operational for both the behind the scenes staff and the people in the cars? What does that process look like? Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely critical. Like this routing planning, you know, bringing your data in, planning your route, and and getting it to a driver. You know, this operational work has been done for a very long time. I think what's changing now is is with the you know kind of availability of these routing tools and solutions, the the ways in which you can communicate with them is creating an opportunity to build these types of tools for audiences which maybe have a, a little lower level of kind of logistics and operational experience. So smaller businesses. Um, can start to approach these. And, and what we found is it's, we have an opportunity to conceive and develop of these solutions to keep them simple, to allow people to approach this problem, to, to kind of stage it in a way that's really digestible and ultimately put it in the hands of the driver. So it's very easy for you to get the job done with kind of a, a changing workforce. So, you know, having tools that have the ability to kind of um, build application experiences around and, and communicate back and forth between, you know, the actual one interacting with the app and the backend solutions, like these types of um, integrations uh, via APIs primarily is really important and it creates a great opportunity to have a, a really good, useful solution. Absolutely, and often the simple solutions are the ones that end up being used and most effective, um, but you know it has to have some backbone to it. So with that in mind, um, this is the last question I'll grill you on before we head into the next section. You know, Looking at that full marketplace, um, of options that are out there for customers now, where does here fit into that spectrum and what kind of makes it unique in the routing uh, space in that regard? Yeah, no, thanks, Aaron. I mean, when we approach any any routing problem or work with any client, you know, it's all about, as I've been laying out here, there's a, a variety of things that need to be conceived of, but but really starting on that kind of x-axis, that ease of use, you know, who are the, the people that are in, engaging with this? Like these types of questions help us pick along the spectrum so you know it does it really need to be how easy does it need to be to use right can, you know do people have competencies in this type of workflow and can maybe work with existing systems um and then also you know when it comes to that richness of of, of kind of routing you know what's what do you need to actually get to that good routing solution so you know that's where we kind of and as we laid out here we see here having really that ease of use potential the ability to build those applications which are can, can have that, that simple to use useful experience, but also behind the scenes, as we'll hear about shortly, all of the information required to have a really um, tuned and, and kind of informative route that takes into account a whole host of constraints. So here just kind of has both of those going for it. And we see it fitting in many organizations that really need to have both of those kind of pieces of the puzzle. 
Well, thank you so much for the insights, and I'm sure you're going to be jumping in um, a little more as we go along. But I wanted to bring in uh, Charlie and Tony from here to join into the conversation. You know, David gave us a great rundown of routing and planning technologies uh, being the best approach for solving some of these challenges. Can you give us a high level overview of the HERE platform and take us to an example of maybe how it can help businesses optimize then their routing operations? Sure. Thanks, guys. And thanks to our audience members. We really appreciate your taking the time to join our webinar today. And we hope that we can give you some valuable insights about routing and delivery. So we can go to the next slide, please. Great. One of our core focus areas at HERE Technologies is the transportation and logistics space. And one of the key products in this area is our tour planning API. This tool creates optimized routes for many different types of transportation networks from middle mile deliveries between VCs and warehouses and stores to complex last mile networks in dense urban B2C environments. The API can handle a wide range of networks and complexity and size in terms of both the number of vehicles in the fleet and also in the number of deliveries that each one of those vehicles has to make. So what exactly do we mean by optimized? What we're doing is planning the sequence of stops based on multiple variables and constraints that can affect the efficiency of the route, such as customer delivery windows, the capacity of the vehicles, and others that I'll highlight a little bit later. Tour Planner optimizes not only for each individual vehicle tour, but also optimizes for the entire fleet itself. It creates the best possible combination of routes using the optimal number of vehicles from the available pool, which means that in most cases, it will use the minimum number of vehicles needed to complete all the deliveries which minimizes your operating costs, among other benefits. We think one of the most valuable capabilities of tour planning is its flexibility. It can be used either in a pre-planning mode, days or weeks before the deliveries take place, in same-day mode, or in dynamic on-demand replanning scenarios during execution. This latter mode is especially valuable if conditions change, such as traffic congestion and unexpected weather events, or additional delivery stops that need to be added during the day. Go to the next slide, please. So what we're showing here is a little bit more detail on the constraints and variable I'm talking about that tour planning uses to optimize each vehicle's route. They are in three main categories, the delivery mechanism, the characteristics of the delivery locations, and the workforce that's involved in the deliveries. So for the first one on the left-hand side there, the algorithm can process several different types of vehicles from bicycles to tractor trailers, and even pedestrians like mail carriers and it accounts for the capacity constraints and ranges and operational costs of each one. A competitive advantage we have in this category is that tour planning can be apl applied to fleet sizes from one vehicle up to thousands of vehicles. In terms of delivery locations, we can account for variables like customer priorities. For example, if a particular customer requires their delivery first thing in the morning, even if that means a more inefficient tour for the driver, and others like assigning optimized territories or geozones to particular drivers. Some examples of the third workforce category are tour planning's ability to account for driver shifts and break times, and also their behavior. We've seen cases where drivers are consistently overriding our recommended routes, and by using machine learning, we, we determine that they're right. They know that the, the delivery needs to be made, for example, at the back entrance rather than at the front entrance, and we add that information into our planning intelligence. FGO had a really interesting application that David mentioned uh, for this constraint flexibility and tour planning. You'll remember from a previous slide that tour planning usually tries to minimize the number of vehicles required to complete all the deliveries. But in the case of that food bank customer that David mentioned, they use the constraint options in a different way. They wanted to make sure that all of the volunteer drivers are able to participate in the deliveries, even if that's not normally considered the ideal way to plan the routes. And similarly, we've designed tour planning with dozens of other options that allow our users to really dial in exactly how they want to plan their delivery routes. Uh, the last point I wanted to make about our solution is the deep mapping content and location data that create the foundation for these capabilities. Tour Planner leverages the here map content, which includes hundreds of different factors involved in creating optimal routes. These include information on the physical road network, vehicle attributes, such as what types of vehicles are allowed on which types of roads, speed limit information, and real-time and historical traffic flow information, just to name a few. So, so Charlie, let me just... Real quick. So, Charlie, let me just add some additional context on the flexibility of the tour planner. Uh, you know, because the tour planner is an API service, you know, the added benefit is being able to leverage that in other services or external services, services outside of here. So, you know, you can imagine tour planning 
being integrated into uh, an uh, order management system or a TMS type of system to really bring in uh, those orders and use the power of the tour planning uh, on top of that. Uh, additionally, you know, like you see here on the slide, um, you can also take the information that comes out of tour planning to really visualize that and give the dispatcher or somebody at headquarters uh, a visual of not only what the tours look like, but um, also be able to adjust those tours if needed. So if they don't like it, they can, you know, push a different lever, uh, you know, change some variables to, to get the desired outcome. Um, and then finally, you know, the real power here, then really once you have the tours set the way uh, uh, the customer would like, you can then push that over to the driver so they can execute on these tours, not only execute and be able to get that turn by turn information in the sequence of orders, but also be able to um, see what's going on throughout the course of the day, see where uh, potential hiccups are, where potential uh, bottlenecks are, uh, and then it allows our customers to really take action on top of that. So it's, it's, it's very flexible and really it provides the continuity between what is planned and how it's executed. So um, just some additional context on the flexibility there. Super, thank you, Tony, very much. So if we go to the next slide, please, Aaron. And what we'd like to do now is cover a couple of case studies from our customer portfolio. Uh, the first one here involves a large e-commerce company operating across the European market. They were experiencing a lot of problems in their delivery processes that limited their scalability and negatively impacted customer service. And I'm sure at least some of these will be familiar to you. First of all, their existing applications couldn't handle replanning during live execution. They were not able to add stops to tours that were already dispatched and they couldn't cluster deliveries into logical and manageable territories for their drivers. They also needed an intuitive driver application that had integrated navigation capabilities like traffic information and stop point clustering and last meter address accuracy. And of course, there's the always familiar refrain of customers demanding real-time ETA information about their delivery orders. We implemented a solution for them involving our tour planning API and our driver app combined with our location services tools that I just talked about that gave them the ability to create those dynamic tour plans that they could change on the fly, improve the efficiency of their routing, and gave their drivers more effective customer service tools using the mobile driver app. Can we go to the next one? Super, thanks, Aaron. Our next customer case study is with a global supplier of building materials, and they're making daily deliveries to thousands of construction sites around the world. Their most urgent problem involved the delivery of concrete, which is highly perishable. And so in this case, the main challenge was managing very tight delivery windows and minimizing dwell times as opposed to complex stop sequencing. And this situation is very similar to the one, again, that David had mentioned about their grocery store customer uh, that they were experiencing in their cold chain deliveries. Some of the other challenges our building materials customer faced were in, uh, included lost revenue due to missed SLAs, uh, improving visibility and traceability of the deliveries so they could keep their customers updated on the status, and planning optimal routes based on truck attributes, such as maximum height and weight clearances in the road networks. They have a lot of moving parts in their supply chain and everything really has to work efficiently to avoid accidents and delays. The solution we developed for them, which included our route optimization tools and our mobile driver app again, enabled them to reduce fuel consumption, streamline the dispatch management process, and solve their key pain point by reducing dwell times at job site deliveries. Next one, please, Aaron. Super, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so, sorry, was there a question? Oh, just as we dive into ETAs, you know, you mentioned that this is a key metric for any routing and delivery app. And I was hoping you could elaborate on, you know, how the HERE platform allows for these ETA calculations um, among live conditions, because, you know, things can really change on a dime, especially where we are, uh, my team, David and I here in Boston, you know, traffic uh, 30 minutes later can be an hour different, right? Right, um, right. So like, how do we take that into account with this type of solution? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Probably the most outwardly apparent, if not most difficult uh, question in logistics for both shippers and carriers is knowing, you know, when is my stuff gonna show up? So we wanna talk a little bit about here's capabilities in managing ETAs. Go to the next one, thanks. Yeah, one of the most challenging aspects of executing deliveries in logistics and e-commerce is letting customers know when you'll be arriving and then actually hitting those targets. 
And in order to do that, it's imperative to know what's happening out in the field. We at HERE appreciate that the job of understanding this truth on the ground is really difficult and messy, not only because of the complexity of the variables involved, but also because the situation is dynamic and sometimes just frankly chaotic. There's a seemingly endless number of known and unknown pieces of information that are required to get this right, from the characteristics of the items you're delivering to the condition of the vehicles in your fleet, driver preferences and behaviors, weather and traffic, road construction updates, and so forth. All this information is far too complex to handle some, uh, mainly with spreadsheets and manual processes. So to enable our customers to handle all these complexities more effectively, we've built some powerful routing optimization tools that consider these variables and constraints in real time to calculate more, more reliable ETAs. I'll give you just a couple of examples of the situations our routing tools address. A road closer or an accident happens after your drivers have started their route tours, and now you need to calculate new routes which means, of course, new ETAs for all the remaining customers. Or an electric charging point may not be available at the time your drivers need it. What does that mean for all the downstream deliveries? Another com common problem is wait times and detention. They can appear inconsistent and random at first, but with machine learning tools, we can make more sense out of these situations and detect trends and patterns. The bottom line is that our traffic-aware ETA algorithms are continually gathering intelligence about the transportation networks out there to provide you with more reliable and accurate ETAs. And next one, please. Sure, just one final thing. Uh, we've continued to evolve our global profiles of truck speeds, which improves our overall ETAs across all types of delivery vehicles in both middle mile and last mile networks. It takes into account variables like the total vehicle weight and the weight per axle, the height, length, and width of the vehicle, because all of these affect driving speeds due to the, due to the physical characteristics of the road, and even constraints like whether hazardous cargo is being transported in order to comply with local road access restrictions. Using machine learning again, we continuously refine these predictions, testing them against anonymized real world results from our customer and partner networks across North America and Europe. And some of the results of this work are shown here, which we think are pretty powerful testaments to the value of location intelligence. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Tony. Thanks, Charlie. So, uh, you know, I really just want to, iter to iterate that here Technologies is really committed to helping transportation logistic companies not just solve their unique challenges, but also improve any processes they have in place today or work with them to try and find where we can help find those efficiencies, help them save money um, and improve customer experience uh, uh, along the way whether it's through our vehicle specific attribution uh, contained within our maps, services like the tour planner that we just talked about, or really our new platform that leverages the, the latest technologies to help build a customized solution or a customized service uh, for requirements, uh, excuse me, for our customers uh, that, and their unique requirements. Uh, here is uniquely positioned uh, to contribute to the success of any company in the supply chain space. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Charlie and Tony, for the in-depth look at the HERE platform and some of the capabilities within. Um, for this last section, I want to bring back Dave Holmes from the Sanborn and NAPGEO team, who's going to give us just a bit of a brief overview on ways that uh, customers such as you all on this call could get started with the platform and some of the approaches that we've used to help people along with that process. Thank you very much, Aaron. Go on to the next slide. Uh, good, good day, everybody. As you have heard, uh, with the HERE technology platform, you can do a lot of things to address your logistic challenges, but it is can be a fairly complicated platform. And so an obvious question is, how does, how does a, uh, a company get started with this technology? Uh, we are a partner of HERE. We've been with HERE for uh, a couple of years. We have a good bit of experience in the world of logistics. And it's partners like us who are ready to help you get going. Uh, we can sit down and understand your use case. We can have a conversation around which APIs to take advantage of and how you might string those together to solve your particular uh, routing and logistic uh, challenges. Um, of course, we can assist with your account setup and billing and, and you know, get you access to the HERE API licenses. We also offer a couple of options to assist if you 
need some additional help in building out an application to meet your exact needs with here technology. One is a consulting um, service and also application development services. You go to the next slide, Aaron, please. So a partner such as us, we can help you uh, consult uh, with consulting on best practices, which APIs to use, how to use them, how to take advantage in the spatial logic of your application. Um, as you saw that David talked about, it's imperative that you produce a simple and effective spatial user experience, simple enough to be usable. That was the, uh, was the message uh, a few slides back, and, and we, can, we have years and years of experience in building uh, this type of a, a geospatial application. It's also critical to gain some efficiencies of integrating properly with other business systems, your sales order system, your load management system, and, and on and on, and also work potentially working with third-party data. We can assist with that part of the, uh, of the conversation. Uh, here comes with a set of terms of services. We know these very well, and we can help you navigate those. And we can assist when consulting on cloud resourcing and deployment considerations. If you'd like to outsource an application project, we are also in that, uh, provide those type of services. And some of the things to consider for application development is a strong experience with the HERE APIs around logistics. Again, building simple purpose-driven user experiences that uh, meet your needs, achieve the you know, high performance. We wanna take advantage of these APIs in an optimal fashion so you're not wasting any money or uh, API calls. Uh, we do these kinds of projects in close collaboration with our clients. We offer data maintenance services to uh, uh, the care and feeding of your logistics application. Uh, we offer cloud hosting and we do this all with PMP certified project managers. So basically to sum up how to get started, you've got three basic options to consider as we like to put it. Uh, do it yourself. We can help you get started with the HERE documentation. We can get you set up with a billing account and get you started and you can take it on your own with your own team. We can, you can do it as a do it yourself with some consulting and we can provide a, uh, a consulting uh, on a number of topics that I mentioned to make sure you're going down the right path and not wasting any development cycles. Or you could consider outsourcing. We'd be glad to sit down and talk to you about scoping a project that uh, takes advantage of the HERE technologies to address your logistics challenges. Thank you very much. Back to you, Aaron. And thank you, Dave, for the overview on how to get started um, from here. I want to bring it back to uh, the Q&A portion of our presentation. And just as a reminder for everybody, the contact information for both Charlie and Dave Holmes is on the screen here. You can take note of if you want to follow up with some more in-depth uh, conversations after the webinar. I'm sure either would be glad to get on a call with you. Um, but in the meantime, we have uh, about 20 minutes left in the hour that we can entertain uh, some questions from the audience. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Aaron. Thank you to the experts. Great presentation, great insights indeed. Uh, to the audience, if you have questions, you can submit your question via the chat uh, because we have some time to take questions. Um, I have here already uh, a few questions. My first question is for David. Um, David, in your presentation at the start, you mentioned um, information about the delivery factors and the variables. Um, I would like to know in what way here technologies is updating those factors and variables just to make sure that each time you are also matching your applications with, let's say, the latest requirements of your customers. That's a good question. Um, I think as it relates to kind of requirements, obviously we want to know what are those parameters that we're working with and match them up with the available configurations of, of the tour planning API or whatever the routing kind of solution may be on the, on the back end. Um, you know, it's, you know, and how easy it is to update, you know, that's kind of, you know, if we can anticipate, like sometimes we'll build, build proof of concepts that, you know, will initially start out. Kind of addressing a subset of, of the solution 
and then we can kind of build it in a way that it's easy to kind of modify and, and kind of grow the solution as maybe more uh, use cases flow, in, in, you know, through this, this kind of maybe POC to growing kind of solution. Um, but, but really that, you know, the ability to kind of modify, you know, that solution is kind of built upon, you know, the, the, the complexity as well as kind of what, what is the, what are all those parameters associated with the, with the solution? I guess, I don't know if others on the audience maybe want to kind of comment or if there's another, you know, someplace we want to embellish upon how, how to do that efficiently. I don't know, Charlie, you have any, any thoughts? Um, yeah. Well, I think, you know, so David, I, I, you know, uh, when we talk about different factors or variables, it really is, um client specific that i found in my experience you know some uh some of the folks that we work with value uh uh, uh let's just call it a, a variable more so than others and to give you an example of that you know uh difficult turns for example we do you know some of our customers don't want their trucks uh um uh, making difficult turns so we can help them with that through our router to really, you know, we do have those parameters in place within our services to to really tailor the end result the way our customers want it. So if it's in terms of factors and variables of, of, of uh, the eventual output, that's certainly something that uh, our services take into account. Okay, good. Um, Another question, uh, and perhaps uh, someone of here can answer that question. Can here handle hazmat requirements, and can I tag a specific truck that has hazmat on board and route appropriate, uh, appropriately? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the short answer is yes. Here does have um, uh, that the the hazmat um, restrictions uh, within our map content. This is uh, our map is really what all the services that we've been talking about leverage. So um, within our router or the tour planner, you know, our customers can designate what type of vehicle uh, they want a particular route for. So if that vehicle has some sort of hazardous materials, chemical, flammable, whatever the case may be, um, we will route them on appropriate roads where uh, they those type of vehicles are allowed to go. There's a lot of urban areas uh, that uh, don't, want these sort of vehicles uh, traversing through either the city centers or certain neighborhoods, we take that into account uh, and the router will um, will will find the appropriate routes for that. Okay, very good. Perhaps a question for Charlie. Charlie, um, what are the greatest efficiency gains found in the complete process? I can imagine that for fleet managers and for the companies you work with, the return uh, uh, on investment is very important. Any, let's say, idea about average ranges of return on investments? You on mute, Charlie? Okay, mute, Charlie. Darn it! Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the the categories of, of efficiency gains could be, you know labor uh, labor cost savings from uh, optimizing the the number of vehicles that are being used in the route. Uh, obviously, fuel cost is huge right now with diesel at, what, $5 a gallon. Uh, that can be a huge um, efficiency gain by minimizing the length of the tours, by uh, optimizing the, the distances between stops and so forth. And then, of course, the number of vehicles that are being used. Um, we've seen efficiency gains in sustainability and carbon, um, carbon emissions uh, credits and so forth, particularly in the European market. And so the ranges can be, you know, really from from zero up to 20, 30 percent. It, it really depends okay. on how it's being implemented, the, um, the extent of the application of the solutions to your fleet. Um, some folks start out with uh, in, in a pilot type situation. And so the efficiency gains are going to be smaller until they build up to uh, rolling it out to their entire fleet. So pretty wide range of possibility, depending on how extensively you want to use the solutions. Okay. Yeah, and I'll just Stephen, I'll just just to add on to what Charlie was saying, you know, you know, what I found is that, you know, when we, you know, throughout the term efficiency, it's really different for, you know, different customers and what they're trying to achieve. And at the end of the day, we really like to work at here, uh, uh, just like uh, FGO and Sanborn, we really like to work with our customers to understand what uh, uh, either challenges, use cases, or what type of efficiencies they're trying to gain and really try and marry a solution to that. Um, and then if we take it one step further during like a discovery session, if we understand where the baseline is today, 
uh, um, with their current technologies, we can then work with them to quantify those efficiencies and what that means um, once implemented, whether or not, you know, whether or not we're going to save you money, whether or not we're going to save you time, or whether or not we're going to save you in some labor costs or fuel. So those, there's a lot of different things we can do, um, but safe to say, we really try and tailor um, uh, a solution to uh, each and every uh, customer we work with. Uh, very good. Perhaps I would like to continue uh, with uh, Charlie and here technologies. Um, I saw in your presentation when you were discussing the here tour planning, uh, some interesting elements. Now, I'm based in Europe and I would like to know in what way um, you can tailor mate let's say, all the requirements according to the customer. In Europe, for example, you know that the uptake of electric vehicles is quite high. So in terms of routing, is there also a possibility that I, as a customer, can indicate, for example, that my drivers are driving electric vehicles in which your program, your software can indicate also what kind of charging stations are on the routing uh, on the tour etc is that a possibility absolutely it is a possibility and i'm going to have tony get into the specifics on that so yeah so um uh, it, it's definitely a possibility uh and it's something that the company is is really investing in in mm -hmm. ev technology ev charging points um and and we 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 do see that as coming up very quickly and so to prepare for that, obviously we, you know, it, it, you know, to put it very simply, we have charging points. You know, we have POIs, and we're working. We know where those are, and we can tell you what, uh, you know, where to go get a charge. We can also tell you things like whether or not they're already occupied, uh, what brand it is, what kind of charging point, you know, all that kind of thing. But to kind of blow it up from there, you know, what we're seeing within, um, you know, the, the customers that I work with is not so much where where i can charge my vehicle but how far i can get with an electric vehicle and what's contained within that vehicle for example how heavy is that vehicle uh what kind of battery do i have what kind of range do i have and how i can um, uh, maximize uh the range and the the capacity of the vehicle so i can do my different tours can i can with with the with the stuff i have in the truck can I do a full day stops? Can I do 50 stops? Or do I have to stop in the middle to recharge? Not only do I have to recharge, but how long does it take my vehicle to charge to finish up my uh, my deliveries, right? And so when you take that into account, that impacts the ETAs. And if you know that upfront, then obviously, you know, we can communicate that to customers. And so they have some kind of confidence on when their package is going to be delivered. Um, these are, uh, you know, you know, it, it's very much a new uh, dynamic and a new kind of uh, <laughs> new world we're entering, I guess you can say it that way, uh, with with the electrification of, of these vehicles. But it is coming and we um, we believe we're in a, we're well positioned uh, not only to help today, but to take advantage of what's coming down the road uh, in the future. Okay. And one more, one more quick thing to add to that. Tony mentioned um, whether the whether the charging point is occupied right now. With machine learning, we are building the capability to probabilistically predict when those will be available. So we build that into our routing tool uh, because you're not the driver may not be able to go right now to that charging point. So we can be able to predict when it's going to be open in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good. really interesting points there. You know, AppGeo has been doing some work in the EV charging space as well. And just imagining a future, right, where all of these devices are communicating and you have kind of in real time them scheduling charging times uh, on their way there. I think that's, that's really it. where exactly. we're headed in a few years, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Indeed. not only that, but just, you know, Aaron, to add on to that, you know, autonomous vehicles is also the next big thing, right? You know, labor costs, you know, given what they are, Autonomous vehicles, autonomous uh, driving, even autonomous deliveries for last mile is really something that's um, that's you know coming at us, and we got to be ready for all of that. So we're doing a lot of work well in that said, in those well areas said. as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
to uh, a final question that I have, and perhaps both for uh, Here Technologies and for Abgeo, uh, you are working together, you are partnering, you have seen quite a lot of business cases. Uh, we are talking here about creating efficiencies in uh, smart logistics uh, in terms of routing. Um, I can imagine that you also have seen some people and businesses struggle. So for the participants in the room, uh, I would like to turn, let's say, obstacles into opportunities, bring solutions onto the table. Um, perhaps what are, let's say, the most common mistakes that you see with businesses trying to find the ideal routing system and routing software partner? And what would you recommend to businesses that are now stepping into that selection of the ideal routing partner? And of course, it's not the purpose that you all answer work with Here Technologies <laughs> and with Abgeo. That, of course, they need to do. But there is probably also another answer that you can give. I don't know who would like to start. David? Uh I could I could weigh in there. I think an interesting thing that's shown up when we think about uh, is we're in this planning process, which maybe is not intuitive besides of all the capturing of, of the dimensions and figuring out those is is where's the human involved in the process that's actually kind of, you know, helping to make decisions, helping to evaluate things, really considering, you know, when, when you start designing these end end solutions, the data flows in the machine spits out the answer, it goes to the phone like that is really important. But I think you need to conceive of where there's a human in the loop that can help guide or, or redirect and see some of these kind of um, intangibles that can show up in a process to give them an opportunity to rebalance in the workflow, making sure you're, you're leaving space for an integration or, or someone to interact efficiently without disrupting it, this whole chain of, of kind of automated route kind of communication. That, that's been something that we've seen people come in it's like it's got to be all automated it's got to just go end to end and no one's in, but it's like what what is that going to do to your workforce that's actually now being it for this is being forced upon them you know really decision makers need to kind of at least have in their minds as they're thinking about the best technology and all the inputs where these humans today and in the future are going to be involved in this process because there is value to the, to the process by having them being included in that thinking so uh, that's just my my comment um and I'll pitch it to Dave, who raised his finger. <laughs> David, it's a, it's a great question. One of the one of the things that we uh, have discussed with clients is what happens when there's a a slowdown. There's a change to the to the delivery schedule. Somebody cancels. Somebody uh, puts another delivery into the day's schedule, and all of a sudden the driver is faced with some decisions. I was recently driving out of the Rocky Mountains on a very snowy morning and uh, coming out through the going up to the to the uh, continental divide and there was easily 30 or 40 trucks stopped along the side of the road waiting their turn with the chains and and getting up to the continental divide i'm thinking this is probably adding hours to their delivery and you know this is the problem in real time i was witnessing it and so you have to ask yourself the clients the, the people carriers have to ask themselves what are we doing to enable the driver to make a good decision when these things happen? Do we leave it up to them to, on their own uh, merits and they make their own decision? Or do we provide technology to say, okay, you're, you're looking at an hour delay. What are the consequences of that of all the, the rest of the deliveries for the day? Should you be considering a detour? Should you stay put in the, in the, uh, on the road that you're on? All of those kinds of decisions It very much is to what David is saying, the human element. And that becomes a huge opportunity to gain efficiencies to make sure that those logistics operations and the ETA question, everybody is notified downstream when this thing kind of, uh, happens. And it's not a question of if it's gonna happen, it's just, it happens every day. <laughs> so that's a very common problem that a lot of folks are, are, are facing and this is the kind of technology that can help address that type of problem. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know if Tony, Charlie, or Aaron, you would like to add a comment? Tony, I think, I know. 
Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, I was just get all excellent points. The human element of it, you know, why are we why are we doing this on, on, on their behalf? Um, I would just I would just add really understanding deeply understanding the impetus for this. What problems are we trying to solve? It may sound we you know we talk about it like it's obvious ETAs and, and efficient routes, but really uh, take an internal look at. Uh, what problems we're trying to solve with with this technology? It could be a wide range of things, and we don't want to go in with assumptions that that turn out to be uh, either incorrect or not addressing, uh, you know, the the main uh, the main challenges that you're facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll just add on one last thing. I think you know some of the mistakes that I've seen is is uh, really when it comes to implementation. And I agree with David and Dave and Charlie and and everybody trying to do too much too quickly, maybe do a phased approach. But I also see a lot of times, uh, um, you know, customers that come with a very uh, myopic, you know, singular kind of view to a problem right. and really trying to, let's peel back that onion, if you will, and let's see the whole picture uh, to see where, you know, uh, you know, where we can find those efficiencies. You know, it, you know, exactly. sometimes we get, hey, I have a routing problem. Well, you know, in the course of discussion, we kind of find out, well, not it's, you know, you, you may have some other issues or maybe it's not routing at all. Maybe it's something else that we can help you with. You know, the sequencing of your deliveries is maybe that's your biggest pain point or whatever the case may be. And, you know, I, I would like to challenge, uh, you know, folks to really come in with more of a, hey, let's look at the whole thing and see where you can help me with exactly. instead of just, I have this one singular issue. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry to, I don't know. We this is a great question, but just we I remember something just popped in my head about um one of these it wasn't about the routing, but it was about the culture of how last minute sales orders would get injected in late by, you know, it was just organizationally how they have been operating for a long time, which was creating a lot of the the friction in, in the execution, right? And so it was like it wasn't technology needs to solve why this doesn't work. It was like we ended up after we appealed this onion to identify this like, oh my goodness, like why, why are we allowing this to happen? Maybe we should address this and we'll have much greater success downstream once we can get to maybe how technology actually plays a role. So just returning to that same kind of refrain we're hearing um, of, of kind of being holistic and thinking about the human in the, in the loop. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much. We have come to the end of this uh, interesting, informative and inspiring webinar, this Global Fleet webinar. Uh, together with the support of Here Technologies and Sanborn Abgeo. I would like to thank our moderator of today, Aaron. Thank you very much for moderating this webinar. Thank you also to our experts from Here Technologies, uh, Charlie and Tony. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. And to our experts from Abgeo, uh, David and Dave, also big thanks to the board of you ladies and gentlemen it's clear that you can increase efficiency in routing and delivery and you can do that together with air technology and sanborn abgeo if you have questions about this webinar about also the issue of how to increase efficiencies then of course you can reach out to air technologies and their partners at Abgeo. The webinar will also be available later on on globalfleet.com and I'm pretty sure that you will also receive further information from our partners. Thank you very much and I hope to see you at the next initiative of Global Fleet. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everybody.